Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would film a question and answer session with you. I've been wanting to do one of these for ages and I asked on my Instagram account for your top questions about gluten-free life but also anything else you want to know about blogging or anything like that and you guys have sent me some really good questions so I've loaded them all up on my phone and I'm going to go through them and give you hopefully all the answers that you want to hear. So how do you cope with being on a gluten-free diet and eating out? I get asked so many questions about eating out on a gluten-free diet. It's the one thing that keeps coming up over and over again. And I have written a post on my top tips, which I will link in the description of this video. But I think the more you eat out, the more you just get used to it. You get used to the kind of questions you need to ask. You get used to kind of knowing when places are safe. So the one thing I would say to people is if you are new to celiac and you're really nervous about eating out, I would recommend joining Celiac UK and they have thousands of gluten-free accredited venues including both chains like Pizza Express, um, Frankie and Benny's I think is one as well, Coke Brasserie is another amazing one for Celiacs and all these places will be listed but there's also loads of independent places and you know those places have gone through official training with Celiac UK and they're audited every year to make sure they are completely gluten-free and safe but just look around, like maybe where you live, check out Instagram, see if anybody's posting about places nearby. And just remember that you have to ask the questions that not just gluten-free people ask. So to put that in a more grammatically correct sentence, you basically want to make sure you ask about cross-contamination. You might find that a place lists a gluten-free menu, but then the more you question them, the more you'll find things like perhaps they don't have a separate preparation area, perhaps they fry things in the same oil as gluten-containing things. So you need to make sure you know the questions that you wanna ask them about how the food is prepared. And once you've got those questions nailed, if you're nervous, it does help sometimes to ring ahead or email them to ask those questions before you turn up because sometimes you may feel a bit awkward if you're going with a group and you've got to like grill the wait staff about how they fry their chips. So I find it really helpful to always ask ahead and I know that can be difficult when you like being spontaneous and you can't always do it. But I think as long as you're prepared, as long as you get clear in your head what you're happy with and I know it's a bit cliche, but go with your gut instinct. Like if you don't feel that somewhere is safe, don't eat there. Don't feel pressured into eating there. Ask whoever you're with if you can eat somewhere else. Like don't eat somewhere that you're not sure about because it's just not gonna be worth it if you're ill the next day. So I would say that I have completely forgotten what the question was exactly. Basically practice, it's the same with all things on a gluten-free diet. The more you practice, the more you'll know when you can eat out safely. And actually, once you find places you feel comfortable with, it's such a nice feeling to be able to go out and have a meal and then wake up the next day and feel absolutely fine. So I would say, yeah, you just gotta keep going for it, keep practicing, and don't forget to check out the blog post, which I'll link in the description, which has all my top tips about eating out. So I'm 26 and newly diagnosed. I've been gluten-free for two months. How long until I start having energy? Now, I was diagnosed about 20 years ago, so my memory of kind of first going on a gluten-free diet is very foggy. From what I understand from speaking to dietitians and, you know, experts in that field, it can take a long time for your gut to heal. So if you think that you've had celiac disease and you could have had it for years and not known, and every time you've eaten gluten, it's damaged the lining of your small intestine over time, that is going to take time to heal. If there's a lot of damage there, it's gonna take a while. You can't just go on a gluten-free diet for three days and suddenly everything's great. And that's also why it's so important to not cheat on your gluten-free diet because it just takes time for these things to heal. So I can't give you the kind of medical answers because I don't have that background. But from my experience, I think that my journey was a little bit different because I had thyroid problems as well, which also affected energy levels, which you know is what you're asking about. However, a lot of people say that they feel better within a few months. Some people say it takes about six months. Some people it can take up to a year or 18 months. The best thing I can recommend is keep on top of it. Keep a food diary. And if you haven't seen a dietitian yet, push to see one through your GP so that you can ask them these questions and keep a record of how you're feeling. Because if you're still a few months down the line and you're not feeling great still, then you need to make sure your doctor's aware of that. So I would say always keep on top of it. 
speak to your GP, speak to a dietitian, and I really hope that you start to get some of your energy back soon. Another quick thing to say on that actually as well is that actually when you are celiac, you can have a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies, which is another reason why it's really important to work with a dietitian, because it might be, for example, that you might be perhaps lacking in something in your diet that you need to kind of compensate for with a supplement. So again, another really important reason as to why you should speak to your GP and your dietitian to get an idea of how long it should take till you feel better. But yes, unfortunately, it can take some time. And yeah, I hope you do start to feel better soon. Have you found a replacement for pedo you know, pastry? It's one of the few things I haven't found a gluten free version of. Oh, I don't actually remember if I've ever had phenol pastry before but it seems to be one of the products that I have never found a gluten-free version of. There's gluten-free shortbread pastry, there's gluten-free puff pastry. I've never seen gluten-free phyllo pastry. I've never seen recipes for it. I've seen people use rice paper as like an alternative, but I think perhaps the gluten is so integral to the recipe because it's what allows the dough to stretch so thin. If anyone's found one, can you please let me know, like wherever it is in the world, I will pay international shipping to try that. I've recently become gluten-free and struggling to find ideas for Chinese takeout. Chinese is the one food which is really, really difficult to find a gluten-free alternative to. And if you live near a gluten-free Chinese, I don't think you know how lucky you are. I went to Glasgow a couple years ago and I had a gluten-free Chinese and it was amazing. And Oh, so just I just wanted to move there, but yeah, Chinese food because it uses soy sauce. Soy sauce has wheat flour in, unless you use tamari. But tamari is not normally used in Chinese cooking. They use traditional soy sauce, which means pretty much any Chinese dish is out of the question. And even if you find a Chinese takeaway that's happy to cater for you, take the soy sauce out, or if there's like one dish on the menu you can eat. You then have to contend with the cross-contamination and obviously it's quite traditional in Chinese cooking to not completely clean the woks down because it's what gives the dishes so much flavour. So it's a really tricky one to actually find gluten-free Chinese takeaway and the best thing I can suggest is making your own. Chinese food is really not that difficult to make. You can use tamari soy sauce instead of traditional soy sauce and you can make a whole abundance of dishes and I have been working on a few I'll link a couple in the description down below I've got like a Chinese curry recipe I've got a chicken and cashew nut recipe which I have finally nailed because it was my favorite dish and that will be coming out very soon which I'll also update and put a link to when it's live on the blog but yeah I'd say experiment and try just making your own and also if you've got Sainsbury's nearby, they do have a crispy chili beef like ready meal in the chilled section, which is accidentally gluten free and it is so good. So if you can get a hold of that, I know it's not quite a takeaway, but it's probably the next best thing. So that's my only suggestions, I'm afraid, unless you are lucky enough to find a gluten free Chinese, in which case order one of everything for me, please. Is there any food that you know will cause a reaction that you just think it's too good? F it. No, I don't think there is. When I was at university, I did have a bit of a rebellious stage and I did used to order Chinese takeaway a few times. When my friends did, I felt awkward. I'd never eaten that sort of stuff before. I was away from home for the first time. You know what it's like at that age, you go through a bit of a rebellion. Um, I wanted to do things my way. I didn't want to be confined by eating gluten-free and whereas I would always eat gluten-free bread and things like that, that was the one thing that I would cheat on and I mean now I, I want to go back and slap my past self in the face and say what are you doing because I used to feel terrible and it just wasn't worth it. Um, so at the time I would have said Chinese but even now like I would literally kill to be able to eat egg noodles again. I love noodles or like I've always wanted to try a Krispy Kreme but no I just couldn't. I think the guilt would be too much and I just I couldn't do it. I think I'd feel too guilty. Someone even asked me once if I was on death row, what would my last meal be? And I said gluten-free pizza. And I was like, why would it be gluten-free if I'm going to die the next day? But yeah, so the answer to that question is no. I've never eaten anything intentionally, not in the last like pff, 10 years or so. And I don't think I could. What is the best way to get rid of cravings? Because we all know it's not worth the cheating and it's not the same. 
And that's another thing, like I think no matter how good you think food is gonna be, you're gonna eat it and you're gonna feel rubbish and then you're gonna wish you hadn't eaten it. So actually, like it's just not worth the cheating. Like what, for like a minute of eating something that tastes nice? It's just not worth it. And for me, the best way to combat any cravings is just to make a gluten-free version. Most foods nowadays have a gluten-free alternative, either at the supermarkets or there are recipes online. So if there's something you're really missing, just try and make it. Like for me, I was diagnosed over 20 years ago. I can't really remember what most food with gluten in tastes like. But last year, I really wanted to try ice buns and I was desperate to try them. And I made some gluten-free ones, which I will link the recipe to down below. And I tried some and I was like, oh my gosh, like all the memories just came flooding back. And I was like, I had no idea I remembered what these tasted like until I ate them. So it was the best way to kind of kill any idea of that craving when I walked past a bakery. So I would say definitely just either find a gluten-free alternative in the supermarket or learn to make it yourself. And then you don't have to miss out on it because when you're craving it, you can just make a gluten-free version instead. What is your favourite gluten-free dish? Pizza. What is your go-to comfort food? Pizza. I just love pizza. Like, I can't even think of anything else because all I want is pizza, apart from actually mozzarella sticks. And most chilled mozzarella sticks in pretty much all the supermarkets now are gluten-free, which is actually quite bad because I can't stop buying them. But yeah, pizza and mozzarella sticks. That'd be even better. Do you know which supermarket typically sells the most gluten-free products? I think this really depends on what area you're in. So for me, we have two big Tesco's. We have quite a big Sainsbury's. Um, Morrison's is a bit further away. m is tiny. But obviously in different areas, you've got different size supermarkets. So. I would say Tesco do a really good selection in terms of, they have a lot of chilled, they have a lot of frozen, and they have a lot of ambient products and breads and cake mixes, and they are always coming up with new innovative things. So I would say Tesco has a really good all round lot of stuff, but then so does Asta and so does Sainsbury's, and Morrison's has like a really good range, and even better, it's all in one aisle, so like, ambient chilled and frozen free from is all together and then you've got places like Lidl and Aldi where they have like all these products which are like accidentally gluten free I don't know if I can pick a favourite you know I mean typically I shop at Sainsbury's the most but that's because it's literally two minutes from my house but then I do go to Asda and Tesco quite a lot and now I've started shopping a little more so that doesn't really help but yeah, I would say go for the biggest supermarket you can find because it's probably going to have a bigger range and shop around because you might find that you prefer products from a different supermarket or a certain supermarket. Like, for example, Asda is the only place I found that stocks the Shah gluten-free hamburger rolls, which are just so good. So I will go to Asda just to get those. But then I'll go somewhere else to see it. A specific product from there so yeah that probably is really an unhelpful answer but that is what I'm gonna go with all of them how do you deal with people who just don't appreciate how difficult it is for you to eat out I've been really really lucky like my friends are amazing and they always let me have a say in where we're going or they quite often will message and be like we're going to this place don't worry I've already emailed them they can cater for gluten-free and I don't think I've ever really had to deal with like people who are difficult. Um, I would say even like at work parties, I mean I didn't work in the biggest office which probably made it easier but that they would always kind of check that I could eat stuff and yeah I think if you do come across that you just have to be really kind of patient with people but also be firm like this is not a decision you've made for fun like you're not being fussy you're not eating gluten-free through choice you're eating gluten-free because you have to because you have an autoimmune condition and you could get potentially quite unwell and have severe long-term damage if you do eat it so why should you have to go to a restaurant and risk like eating something that's going to make you unwell and I think 
put your foot down as well and it as hard as it is to say to people well i'm not going or just sit there with like a glass of wine and get really drunk and annoy them all and then they'll have to pick somewhere you can eat next time but in all seriousness like i think if your friends and family aren't prepared to cater for you when there is probably going to be a choice of something for you to eat in most places and they pick the one place you can't eat anything i would say just don't go and stay firm and do what's right for you because your health is more important than going to a meal with friends and i know that's hard but it kind of is do you ever get gluten and struggle to work out what it was <sighs> yeah i have had that before i don't eat out a lot so generally i find that if i get gluten it's either because I have had a stupid moment and not check the ingredients or something, which is very, very rare. Or I have, it's normally if I've eaten out and it's through probably cross-contamination. And I can usually pinpoint what it is because I've only really been to one place. Um, but yeah, I don't tend to struggle. And I would say if you find that you are getting unwell and you think it's like the same feeling as being gluten, keep a food diary because recipes change all the time. I mean... When I was first diagnosed, I used to eat Walker's crisps, I used to eat Marmite, and all these things now are not gluten-free anymore, or they never were, but legislation's changed. You know, advice changes all the time, ingredients change all the time, and I'd say it's really important to maybe just keep a food diary, and that way, if you are finding that you're feeling unwell a lot, you can check back through and be like, right, this is what I ate on these three days that I felt unwell, see if there's anything similar. And if you still can't pinpoint what it is, I would say go speak to a dietitian because you could well have another allergy or intolerance or there might just be something that you didn't realize. So yeah, I don't, I can usually pinpoint what it was that made me ill, but if you can't, I would say a food diary is probably a good idea. And on that note, someone's asked, can you become lactose intolerant once going gluten free? I've heard of this happening a lot. Um, I think generally if you're, if you have celiac, you have a very sensitive gut anyway because of the damage that you've had done and of course I have no medical background in this but I do think it, you know a lot of people do develop secondary intolerances and allergies um, and problems with your digestive system so again that's another reason why keeping a food diary is really helpful and you should always go back to your doctor if you think you have any further problems because it might well be that it's something that could be easily solved through like the help of a dietitian so yeah it is possible but just try and keep on top of it. Do you have any support or advice you would offer a seven year old celiac with being different? Do you know what I'd say? I would say you're amazing. You are special and you are part of an awesome group of people who eat awesome food and are way cooler than everyone else. So I think the really important thing is to make sure they feel included. For me, I was very lucky that a lot of my family ate gluten free with me or my mum would always go to the effort of making like pasta and a gluten-free sauce and then she'd cook some gluten-free pasta and some normal pasta because it's obviously a lot more expensive to cook everything gluten-free and then I would still have the same meal as everyone else it would just be my gluten-free pasta and it made me feel included and I think that is so important because it's hard when you're a kid you don't necessarily want to like stand out from everywhere else and I think just making sure they understand that it's like an exciting thing too like instead of focusing on the fact that you can't have this and you can't have that and this makes you ill and this is bad for you, look at things like, right, we're going to learn how to bake a cake that you can eat. We're going to learn how to make this really simple child-friendly dinner that you can eat. Like My mum got me really involved in the cooking and she made it exciting. And I think it's about just making kids feel like they are special and it's something to be excited about. And, you know, teach their friends about it, like get them talking about it make sure they've got their own like specific plate of food when they go to a party so they don't feel left out like i think it's just about shifting the focus from you can't have this you can't do this to look at all this stuff you can do look at this amazing box of gluten-free brownies or cake that someone's bought just for you like this is your special cake and i think like the way you change that mindset will really help and getting their friends involved and making them feel like they're supporting their friend and part of something exciting as opposed to like oh their friend ha can't have this because they're different i think it's just like a really positive thing for them to grow up with like my friends were all amazing as i was growing up and 
I think it can be done and it's just making sure you have that right attitude. And someone has asked, can you do some kid-friendly gluten-free recipes for my four-year-old celiac daughter, please? I mean, a lot of the things on my blog, I would say are child-friendly anyway. Like, I was kind of brought up with just eating the same thing as everyone else in my family. So, have a look through the blog. There's loads of stuff on there. I think I've even got a post which rounds up all my gluten-free bakes, which I will link down below. Um, but yeah, I mean, things like ice buns, cupcakes, making bread and pizza for the first time, like, that's all stuff I would have loved as a kid. So, I really hope you can get stuck into some of those recipes. And that, friends, is where I'm going to end this question and answer session because I feel like I have talked to you for the last 20 minutes, which is essentially what I've done. But I really hope that you found this helpful. And I've done a few question and answers before, which I'm also going to link to down below. So I've got a couple with um, a celiac dietitian and also with a children's dietitian. And then there's loads of like helpful FAQ posts on my blog, which I'll also link to in the description. But if you've ever got any questions, make sure you leave a comment. Let me know if this video was helpful and if it is and you'd like another one, I'd be more than happy to film a part two, so let me know. Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video guys. I'm going to drink my cup of tea before it goes cold and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!